In 1978, I was a lonely stoner guy looking for something, anything. And then I got a job at Tower Records. Things started getting better. As a young musician, it was a lucky break for me. It was by the punk Seven Inchers I met Richard Weinland, a record collector and bass player for the Subtractions. Young girl with those high heel boots! I was asked to join the band as second guitarist, and at one of our first gigs, Jocelyn was in the audience. A few months later, I left the subtractions, and Jocelyn and I hooked up. The first thing we did was make a band. Our first effort was a new wave band called Altered Features. It had Wendy West on vocals from Wendy and the Twitch, and Larry Gone on guitar, and June Beard on drums. But Jossie and I wanted to play hardcore punk like our heroes at the time, Black Flag and the Dead Kennedys. I graduated from high school in 1977 and had heard of the Sex Pistols, but didn't have any interest in punk until the following year when some of the skaters became part of the punk scene. Before I had any exposure to the world of punk, my primary interest was skateboarding with my friends. My first exposure to live punk music was at the Mabuhi Gardens in San Francisco with Black Flag headlining. I'd read about them and seen pictures in the fanzine, so I was thrilled to finally see a live punk show. When Black Flag started their set, my jaw dropped. Hard and raw, singer Keith Morris had this energy I'd never seen before, and I found myself bouncing around with the rest of the punks. This was the music I had been waiting for, and these were the interesting people I wanted to get to know. That night over 30 years ago was a defining moment in my life. There was a record store a few blocks away from my home, and that's where I bought the fanzines and the records I heard on Maximum Rock and Roll. Working at this store was this guy with spiky hair and peg pants, which I believe was the first punk I'd ever seen in Fresno. He had recommended many records for me to buy, and had invited me to come watch his band, The Subtractions, play. This guy with spiky hair was Dale. I would see Eric Suda at the gigs, and he worked at Warehouse Records right down the street from Tower. And he knew 16-year-old Keith Johnson, who could play some up-tempo punk drums. By July of 81, we played our first gig as Capital Punishment. We played a gig at the Roding Park Amphitheater, and another one at Woodward Park, with newly minted Fresno punk bands at the time, The Maniacs, NBJ, Toxic Shock, the world is in turmoil, can you hear the people cry? The cost of living's rising and I'm too young to die. And others.
think the first time I really paid any attention to punk rock was when I watched a 60 Minutes expose on British punk. It featured clips of punk bands and described the movement as a youthful reaction to the 1977 state of affairs in Great Britain. High taxes, no jobs, no hope. Feeling pretty directionless and always feeling like an outsider, I could relate. My first hardcore punk show had to have been in 1978 when I saw the germs at the Deaf Club in San Francisco. I loved it. The audience was half punk and half deaf patrons of the bar. The punks were pogoing, the band was loud, fast, and snotty, and there was even a girl bass This first lineup of Capital Punishment only lasted for about a year and broke up when Keith and Eric moved out of town. This version of the band was so much fun and we learned a lot about the DIY punk ethic. How to put on a show, do booking and promotion. We had no idea what the future would hold. One, two, three, four.